The community for Team Fortress 2 has a long history of providing contributions to the game. But one of these contributions, which has always stood out for me, is the time when the community made full-fledged updates for Valve. Ever since 2010, with the first content pack being ported to the game, you could say at this point, it opened a Pandora's box that no one at the time would realize the impact of. Valve has always stated that they can't compete with the community in terms of the amount of content they can produce. So with the implementation of a dedicated program for community content to be submitted into the game where both the item creator and Valve get paid, Valve was really starting to love the community create stuff. And the player base loved it too. It was a win-win for all people. But now Valve was curious to take this a step further. Instead of just shipping a bunch of hats occasionally in a content pack and calling it a day, what if they took even more of these hats and maybe an entire SFM and bundled it all into a brand new major update that everyone would be notified about? Let me introduce you to the Robotic Boogaloo update, the first 100% community created update, down to the promotional material, hats, and of course, unusual effects. From what was originally just a bunch of hats posted by numerous modelers on the TF2 Emporium thread, now got fully adopted by Valve to be a brand new major update. And you can say what you want about it, but what is true is that this made Valve a filthy amount of money to the point where it broke PayPal. And we have a revenue share uh, with those people and their takeaway is $500,000. The first two weeks that we did this, we actually broke PayPal. Obviously, when you're in Valve's shoes, why would you say no to free lab to community created content that you can sell to other customers and earn revenue from? And I mean, the player base was cool fit and Valve was cool fit. So what could go wrong if they kept going with this plan of releasing community updates? The invasion update was a disaster in every way imaginable. And this really was a straw that broke the camel's back for Valve. And why we have never seen a community update ever since. I'm not gonna go way in depth about everything that happened since another YouTuber has already done that. But all you need to know is there were delays for the update when it was initially projected to release on September 17th, 2015. But it got added a month later on October 6th. And there were also major leaks about the update. But worst of all, the whole team were fighting for who got to have the most amount of money for the amount of work they did. It was all a mess, but this single-handedly was what left a sour taste in Valve's mouth. And as we all know for Valve, if it doesn't work once, they won't bother trying again. But still, after this catastrophic blow to the community, they still persisted and would continue creating updates years since this incident. Things like the Frontline update, the Mayan project, Iron Gauntlet. Now, although Valve had no trust in the community to handle an entire update on their own, they still wanted to take cosmetics from these glorified Steam Workshop billboards and implement them in their own updates. This is pretty much what they've been doing for years since Jungle Inferno. And although the community knew there was next to zero chance of the update being added, they still went through the hard work of designing them, promoting them, and of course, making all the hats for them which is pretty commendable. This leads us to the current day with a new major community update, which you probably don't know about according to a poll I made. The Tropic Crisis update. And unlike other TF tubers, I'm pretty disappointed in it. And not in the sake of hating on things for the sake of hating, but because objectively, I'm disappointed in the way it was handled in every aspect. Let's take a look at the Tropic Crisis update. And for the sake of explaining why it's objectively bad, Let's also look at the Fancy vs Nasty update. These updates both weren't fully added into the game and have had parts of them taken out and put into other Valve updates. On the surface, these updates look insanely different, but they both have the same underlying goal of selling hats, except one of them does it way better than the other. One of the updates uses story as a backbone for how the project progresses each day, and that generally just feels like it belongs in the game with the way Valve used to run things. Now take a look at the other one, Tropic Crisis. You can say that it looks better, has a better premise, but don't get distracted by it all. 
and let's look at what the update really is according to the update page. Just like all the hip community update pages now, it doesn't need a long blog post to explain it all. It can explain it to you in a short SFM, which I mean, that works. Updates like the Mayan project did it well, and if using a video to explain everything works, then there's not really a problem. It just becomes a bit harder to condense all that information into a short 3 minute video. Unfortunately, when you look at something like the Tropic Crisis trailer to me, personally, just feels like a super flashy, grossly simplified advert, when it really shouldn't be that way. The mercenaries don't act like they should, and pop culture memes are in there. Yet the workshop is still expect us to take it seriously, on the same regard as end of the line or invasion. I mean, even if that wasn't the intention, that's what's happening, and he can't really throw away what Valve gave to the community and play Barbie doll with the mercs to promote a flashy update, as after all, it was pitched as something ready to be adopted by Valve into the game. I could go on and on about every single problem with this update, but ultimately, the impression I got was that the creators knew the update wouldn't be added officially into the game, like Invasion, so they just made a flash in the pan advert to sell the TF2 players. I'm not trying to say that's what they did, but that's just the impression I got. There's nothing inherently wrong with trying to mass promote the update to the TF2 player base, but at the very least, you could try to make it something serious and to have a coherent story. That's enough of that mini rant. And you would know that I don't like lazy story writing. I don't think anyone likes lazy story writing, but especially when it massacres a story that's brilliant and when stories for an update are crucial if it's in a different setting. Going back to the fancy vs nasty update for a sec, it objectively had a good realistic story that fit within the bounds of the TF2 universe. You knew why the mercenaries were going to this new setting, and even though selling hats was its whole point, it at least entertained the player base and had lots of content incredibly faithful to the way Valve operated. To the point where it was officially mentioned by Valve in a blog post. You can probably see where I'm going with this, but Tropic Crisis pretty much checked none of the criteria of being a faithful update that would be appropriate in the so-called timeline that TF2 has. Robotic Boogaloo was created after a major man vs machine update and thematically it made sense and had no problem fitting into the TF2 lore. Invasion and End of the Line were out there, but at the very least, the stories for these updates were fledged out and it just worked. I'm guessing if something like Tropic Crisis was implemented back in 2015, it would cause an uproar for how out of place it was and how much of the content pack was just skin, hat and unusual effect. Some of you might say that this is the way TF2 has evolved over the years and I should just accept that every update from now on is just hats and maps. But even though I never got to experience the glory days of TF2 and came into the scene around 2018 to 2020, it's just painful to see how low the standard for any community created project has gotten. And you can say that this is all Valve's fault, and that's probably true. But since Valve won't make anything for TF2, and it's all in the community's hands, I honestly think at the very least, the community can uphold the same standard as old Valve updates, and we can just all pretend that TF2 is getting major updates again. Anyways, I don't have anything against the Tropic Crisis team or anything, I'm just stating my thoughts about why it's downgrade, and hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. As always, have a good one.